a kind of an interesting job came into the shop this week. <laughs> this, this is a far off relic of my early sculpting days. And the owner of the piece contacted me and asked me if I'd be willing to kind of uh, sweeten up the paint job, just fancy it up some. Also, while I'm at it, I think, I'm, I, think I might add a tongue. The basic job is just uh, fool around with it, have some fun, add some layers of paint and see what I come up with. Hope you stick around. <laughs> I have a piece of jelly tong here and I have to admit, I'm a little nostalgic about this wood. I spent uh, many years of my life carving jelly tong. It's a Malaysian hardwood, very soft, yet with a very, very fine grain. It's absolutely a superb carving wood and was used a lot uh, in, as a pattern maker's wood because of it. it just holds great detail. It's very easy to work. It's just nothing that isn't brilliant about it. All right, let's go bandsaw those out. Got the wood cut out. Break out the old tight bond. Get some glue going. Get the surfaces nice and wetted out. Very right, good. Let's pop these into the clamps. Put that about like that. Put some pressure on the clamp. Nice, okay. Clamp number two. Make sure the parts don't go walking, don't go creeping. And one more clamp isn't gonna hurt anything on the tips. Now, this is a, uh, looks to you like a cheap scrap piece of wood, but it actually, it's a, uh, a very effective machinist vise. One of my favorite tricks for clamping things to the drill press is to hold the workpiece in place with the drill press. So right now this bit is pushing down hard on this thing and holding everything. It can still pivot, but it's being held pretty well in place. And that allows me to come in and put in the other clamps and all the other pieces that are gonna hold this thing in place. The workpiece that you're hole sawing needs to be well clamped to the table. The tenon machine really well. Now we can consider carving this block. Always, always machine before you carve. So machine first, carve later. This is one of those situations uh, that I was talking about when I said it's always better to machine something uh, before you carve it than to try to machine a carving because I got to drill this hole down in that mouth and it'd be obviously if this was still an uncarved block I could clamp it up and machine it without any problems. Oh well, let's find out. Here we go. See how we get on. Well, I can tell you that the reason I'm fighting it so hard, aside from the fact that the run, <laughs> the run out in that bit is ridiculous, uh, but the reason I'm fighting it so hard is I am, I'm cutting end grain. Bottom line here is I'm, I'm trying to machine end grain, and uh, boy, that's tough. It's tough to cut into this end grain. <laughs> that was pretty brutal. This is one of those situations where I'm going to make something better out of something that I didn't really like. And that is that uh, I wound up having to hog that hole out uh, into a pretty irregular hole because it was really the only way I could do it. Then I realized actually it was to my advantage. So let's break out the five minute epoxy because without five minute epoxy, there is no life. I can just, I'm going to, by the way, to make that tongue stronger, I'm going to run a steel rod way down deep into it. One of the things I did not like about the tenon, machining the tenon and uh, machining the mortise, was that, you know, there's nothing regular or even on this guy. He's very hacked and, and irregular, and he's got all kinds of, uh, he's not a lot of polished, smooth shapes. He's pretty rough. And so the, the round tenon thing was kind of bothering me a little bit. My original plan was to kind of carve it once I had put it in place to kind of carve it down so that the, the style of the tenon matched the style of the piece. So that was my plan. Best laid plans didn't work. And then I realized, well, 
I just made the hole oversize, really, because I almost didn't really have a choice in the matter. And now, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to try to fill the entire mortise with five minute. That would be a waste. I'm just going to get this thing really solidly glued in there. And then we will uh, fill the rest with Magic Sculpt and make it nice and smooth and invisible, make the repair invisible. As you can see, I got the tongue all nicely uh, mounted in there and uh, puttied up. That was beautifully done. So let us now slap the first coat of gesso on there. Do that right this minute. I'm just gonna seal that wood up with gesso. Can you see that? I'm just trying to get it so you can actually see what I'm doing. Not that there's a lot of mystery involved with slapping a coat of white paint on something. People tell me my videos are like watching paint dry. I think that's a compliment. I'm not sure. It's not going to be possible to get this job done in any reasonable length of time without the magic and the glory of a hairdryer. It dries in seconds. That is what we like. Let's slap on another coat. All right, let's get these feet recoated. I'm going to cut that edge first. Some colors are just more fugitive than others, meaning they're more likely to fade when exposed to light. Beautiful. Got the feet done. All right, let's get this tongue painted, a very tongue-like color. <laughs> sort of disgusting pink tongue. This is very much about being anatomically accurate. This is my T-Rex here. Yeah, T-Rexes had these big lewd pink tongues. I know that because I saw it on a Flat Earth Society website. I had to go with the latest scientific knowledge. <laughs> to speed along the process of painting this T-Rex, I made this comp in Procreate. Just a handy little comp. This thalo blue is highly trans transparent. I may want it to be a more of a true blue than a thalo. So we'll see. We'll see if I stay with this color or not. This particular, it's going to be a dark blue color. Whether it's going to be an out of the jar thalo remains to be seen. We'll see. I'll experiment a little, figure out what I want to do with it. All right, I was <clears throat> laying on some dots with the old dotting tool. Just a stencil, a dotting tool, just a round sharpened stick, basically. When you get the paint on right, it makes a clean dot. When you don't, you have to do the dot 17 times to get a clean dot. But it works. Eventually. It works. It tends to work better on smooth places. If it's really rough, you're going to get a rough dot no matter what. No matter what you do. You're going to get a rough dot. All right, nice, nice patterns. Very good. We're gonna get on to the next pattern, which are gonna be these yellow triangles. Get them painted on. Loads of fun. And the way to do them the easiest is to do them in stages like that. Let them dry as you go along. And of course, I'm using very clean water to dilute my paint so you don't get blue or any other colors in there. So I'm just doing one line at a time on each one. That way each line can dry so I'm less likely to smear them. All right, so I thought I had all the triangles done, but then I found this last one hiding on the underside of the tip of the tail. So I'm glad I saw that. <laughs> I didn't want to leave one poor orphaned orange dot on the body. Anyway, it was the last one and we'll get him painted in. All right, time to paint the inner mouth or the opening to the mouth. Or maybe it's the esophagus. What am I doing here? I'm painting the back of the throat here. I cut these edges in there if I can. Nice and tight. Getting his little Adam's apple going on up in there. Very nice. I mean, you, know, you can't roar like a proper tyrannosaur without an Adam's apple. I don't think you can anyway. What do I know? All right, pretty good. Tyrannosaurs have terrifying, vicious claws, and uh, I feel like I captured that really well. So let's go ahead, on the one hand, let's go ahead and do the other side and get him painted up. 
You got to admit that properly captures the terror of Tyrannosaur claws. Really is just no end to the magnificence of this thing. All right, we got this kid all painted. <laughs> I think he's looking pretty ferocious. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you got something out of it, and I'll see you in the next video.